Alert, what's going on everybody? We are back. And I'm realizing, I've been a bitch in these past couple videos. I need to start bringing a fucking energy. But today, I'm going to tell you guys my personal tips. Obviously, I can only speak on my personal experience of how to go pro in bodybuilding. There's not really like a blueprint for it. And I think a lot of advice that some people give, it's like, how are you going to give advice on how to do something that you haven't done? You wouldn't listen to your broke friends on how to get your fucking money up. And some of y'all do it, and it's the reason why you haven't got your money up. So, throughout this video, I'm going to be dropping tips. We went pro in technically under four years of training. Um, and like two and a half years of consistently training. So, it's if I can do it, you guys can do it. And if you guys can learn from some of the things that I didn't learn till later on, you might even be able to do it sooner. So as we as we get through this workout, we're gonna try to hit chest today. My chest has been like kind of fucked up. I don't know. It's been giving me a little bit of discomfort. We need to get some fucking TB500 and and BPC. But I'm gonna be I'm gonna be trying to give you guys any bit of game, like the whole nine, like literally like everything that it takes. Because there, there's lots of things that go into it that people people don't realize right and people get to see just like the fun stuff or like you on stage or like they get to see you hold the pro card but they don't get to see what it really takes like even just a prep alone what it takes and then we're talking about going pro and there's a lot of fucking checking yourself that comes with it so we're just gonna bump on the way to the gym and uh i guess just rip the hellcat <laughs> Start off with the first tip. You don't make shit as a pro bodybuilder. You're not gonna, most likely, there's a select few, very small percentage of pro bodybuilders that make enough from bodybuilding to where they can have nice things like a really nice car and shit like that. Most of the money is gonna have to come elsewhere. Like I said earlier, kinda little sauce on the chest, we'll see how it goes, but my first tip in, in, in what it takes or how to go pro in bodybuilding is being fucking real with yourself. And it's something that's very hard to do, especially early on, but there's a lot of times you'll see people trying to compete in divisions that they don't necessarily belong in. They're, they're, they're forcing classic when in reality they're, they're an open bodybuilder. Or they're really trying to do classic, but like they could go and do men's physique and turn pro. Like they're, they're, they're forcing something that's not there. Like at the end of the day, genetics are a huge factor. And so that's gonna limit or that's gonna dictate like what category. And it's very hard to be realistic with yourself, especially all these people that think they're gonna hop on their first cycle and go pro. It's most likely not gonna happen like that. If you could have the best response in the world, you probably are still not gonna have the density, the maturity to compete with the dudes on a pro stage, especially if you're in an open category or a classic category. The next thing is understanding the timeline, right? For a lot of you guys, if you're say, listening to this at like 18, right? And you haven't competed, I'd still recommend competing, just getting your first show out the way, just so you can figure out if you really love the sport. Because some people say they want to go pro in bodybuilding, but they've never hopped on stage. That's like me saying, yeah, bro, I want to I wanna be a fucking UFC fighter, but I've never fucking stopped, st stepped in the octagon. You, you still don't know what it really is like. You can, you can train like a bodybuilder and eat like a bodybuilder, but if you step on stage, you don't know what it's like to actually be a bodybuilder. Up until that, you're just a weightlifter. You're not a bodybuilder yet. Right? So, understanding that after that first show, you figure out that you want to do it. If you keep fucking trying to compete every year, you're delaying your process. You guys saw me. I did three national shows three years in a row. So I felt like I was right there. And obviously, we got it on the third national show. But, like, had I not competed in that first national show and taken a year off season, I probably would have went pro earlier, to be honest. But I wanted to compete because here's the thing. When you guys are in a deficit on prep, you're not growing. You're cutting. You're not going to be putting on the same amount of muscle as you would if you were in the proper off season. So we're low-key in our just rock a pump cover era. Don't take it off the whole workout. I don't know. I go through little phases like that every once in a while. Where I'm just like, like I didn't bring a stringer. Like it is, this is just what it's gonna be until we're completely pumped up. So you've decided, right? We got the basis. You understand that you're gonna have to make some sacrifices and maybe have a longer off season. Now we gotta talk about 
the next step is, is what you're willing to take, bro. And that literally, that is a play on words. If you guys are new to the sport, all these pro bodybuilders are on PEDs. They're on steroids, or what I like to call diet water. And there's consequences that come with this. It's not just a, an upside. There's a downside to it. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah, you're going to recover great. You're going to fucking look insane. Be super swole. But there's side effects that come with it. You're going to put your health at risk. And you got to make that decision. And one, if you're under 21, I don't think you should even come close to touching it. Even considering that. There's still so much you have to learn about yourself. Just being a fucking human being and being an adult. You're a fucking kid. But if you're, I'm thinking anyone that's that's old, above 21, like, you gotta make that decision. That's what you think. To understand that. Yeah, there's a chance. There's some people that go pro naturally. But there's a very small probability that you're one of those, like, little 1% of the fucking population that's listening to this video. That has the genetics to go pro naturally. And at the end of the day, all PEDs are gonna do is shorten the time that it takes. You're actually gonna be able to push past your natural limit, but you'll be able to put on muscle way faster. But it's something you guys need to do your own research. And you don't just listen to me. You do your own research on all the downsides of all these different things. And when you talk about going into a prep, there's a lot of things that go into your body that are very, very toxic. So you have to be willing to put it all on the line in a sense. You have to be willing to give something up. You're going to give up your health in exchange for this, this pro card. Same thing with these NFL players, right? You want to be, you want to be in the NFL? You're probably going to give up. You're probably going to have some CTE. You're going to fucking get hit in the head a few times, right? There, there, there's, there's an upside and then there's a downside. Fuck, I don't know. It's like, I guess we'll find out once we start pressing. I kind of want to bench press. Which, which it, I'm not going to do simply because that my chest already hurts and that's just, that's just really playing with fire. But I guess we'll start the dumbbell press. As I go up in weight, we'll see how it feels. Worst case scenario, I'm going to commit to chest. I'll just go super lightweight and put volume in. The other sacrifice is you're going to have to give up a lot of shit, right? If you really want to go pro and be the best, yeah, you might be able to slack a little bit in your off season, but when it comes to prep, that's 16 to, could be 24 weeks of with anything going on, it does not matter. You have one goal and you're going to give up time with friends, family, you're going to miss out on events, or you're going to have to go to these events and be the person sitting there eating fucking tilapia and broccoli. That's just the fact of the matter. Or you just don't go anywhere. It puts a lot of strain on a lot of relationships and it's a very selfish sport. That's something that not a lot of people talk about. Is that in, in that prep of however long it is, you run these multiple shows, it is you are the number one priority. You gotta get your cardio in, you gotta get your lift in, you gotta pose, you gotta get all your meals in. Nothing else matters. And with all that, you still have to deal with the rest of life. So you still gotta go to work, and, and, and fit this in to all these other things. Chances are not everyone has the privilege just to be able to have everything revolve around the gym in their day. It's gonna have to revolve around work. So there's gonna be a ton of sacrifice that you have to be willing to give up. But at the end of the day, you wanna be great at anything. And being a pro bodybuilder is, is you're one of the greats. You're like, you're the great in the sport. You're an elite of the sport. It takes a lot of fucking sacrifice on relationships, mental, physical, all that. I played football in high school. Like a lot of y'all probably played some sort of sport. I ran track a little bit in college. But bodybuilding is gonna bring a whole new realm of your physical toughness, of beating your body into the ground. Mind you, like getting lean, what is that? You're starving your body while pushing yourself in the gym, while taking things that are gonna alter your hormones, crash your estrogen, make you feel like shit. But the mental toughness that comes with bodybuilding is unlike any other, any other sport. It is, a, it is a, a you versus you battle. And a lot of people go into prep with a very weak mental toughness and they get their ass whipped. They, they find themselves binging, they can't stay disciplined, they want to quit. You need to have strong mental toughness. And, it, and it's one of those things that 
I tell everyone you should do a prep because you're gonna find out a lot about yourself. It's a fucking gut check. You're gonna figure out if you're really about everything that you think you're about. If you're really as tough, if you're really as disciplined as you think you are. If you got 20 weeks and no bullshit, that's just hard to do when there's all these temptations around. And the other thing is when your mind starts playing tricks and you're looking in the mirror, you're the one that's gotta live with that. It's, it's only you. The next step is the money. It is not cheap to bodybuild. It is very expensive. When you have, you know, coach, we'll, 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 talk, we'll get to that. You got your coach, you got your food for fucking all these weeks. You start eating fucking shrimp and, and all these fucking high quality meats, right? You want to fuel your body? That shit adds up. Then we talk about in the off season, you're eating a shit ton of food. That shit adds the fuck up. Going through pound five, four to five pounds of meat a day, like, that shit's fucking a lot. It's a, it's a lot on the budget. And now we have your coaching fee, your food, right? Those are monthly costs. You really want to take care of your body? So get some body work done. Deep tissue, all that stuff made a big difference this year. I think part of the reason that I went pro, my body, I was able to push my body so far. So you got that. And we haven't even talked about paying for the show. You got your NPC entry fee, your show entry fee, the travel fee. If you're in a place where there's not like a national show close or there's not really a regional show close to where you want to fucking compete, you got to pay for your hotel, your fucking travel there, maybe you drive, maybe you fly. The shit adds up. Now, obviously, I bring Eddie, who you got, who's filming this video, but like Vegas cost me almost 10K in everything for me to me to pay for everything. It's super fucking expensive to compete. Obviously, it's work that we fucking, we turn pro, but like, it, it's, it's the cost of the sport. It, 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 it adds up. And now, we're talking about multiple shows, and then you really want to get to the high level. We're talking gear. Most of the stuff, to be honest, like test is not expensive. You guys would be surprised. Pre-workout's more expensive than test. But now we have the blood work that comes with it, all your health stuff that come with it, getting proper tests done with it, and then you obviously want good shit. You paying for farmer grade is expensive. You step into certain realms, certain certain diet waters, your primo is super expensive. Your orals are for the most part very expensive. And hopefully you don't get fake shit. And then you got GH, which is retardedly expensive. I'm talking like $200 every two weeks or so. If that, depending on how much you run, 250 to 300 every two weeks, that shit, that shit adds up. And that's something that you'd run for a while. So like, it, the cost financially has to be there. Because the last thing you want to do is run yourself dry and add all this extra stress, right? Bodybuilding is a hobby. And some people are able to make it into a career. But you go, on, you go and compete, you don't want your stress levels high. And so like, if you're strapped on cash trying to compete, all you're gonna do is add way more stress, all this unnecessary stress to your life. So you need to be able to afford it financially. It's not, it's not a cheap sport. Yeah, if you're going naturally, it's still cheap, but you still got your coach, you still got travel. The only thing you don't gotta pay for is diet water. something about it but a coach this is not something that you do alone the best in the world all have a coach there's a reason for that having that guidance and someone that you trust is going to change everything and being able to be with a coach for multiple years and that coach learns the in and outs of your bodies and learns your training how you respond to training how you respond to diet water is going to change everything you're switching coaches all the time, one, you're gonna give yourself a bad rep, but it's gonna be very difficult to try to learn your body. You need to fucking take the time and build that relationship with a coach. The trust will go a long way. That's the reason why I'm with my coach. It's because I trust him. I trust everything that he says. So when it, it's, it's down to the nitty gritty, he's like, all right, this is what we're gonna do. I'm not sitting here second guessing. And being able to afford your coach throughout the off season, because a lot of people will just pay for prep and they stop. But here's the thing, what you see on stage is not from prep. That's from the off season. That's from you busting your ass in the off season. That's what your bulk is. Your bulk is what you see on fucking stage, not that at the start of prep, you start locking in. 
And it's something that's hard to do, it's something that I even struggle with, and I, I just went pro. It's not something that's easy to do, but if you're able to do that early on, you're fucking chilling. You need to be able to put your ego aside, right? It's easy to think that you know it all, but like, I've realistically, since I've gotten into bodybuilding, my whole life has been surrounded by bodybuilding. And me being an influencer or doing social media, I guess all I do is consume. I now coach, I'm not like a prep coach, so like, I've done nothing but just soak up knowledge these four years, and like, I still have so much to learn. It's very easy, especially like, when you get a little bit of taste of victory, right? Say you're watching this, you go win your regional show feel like you know it all and it's hard to kind of put that ego aside and to be able to check yourself so it's something that's needed because otherwise you're gonna be stagnant you're not gonna grow you'll have probably opportunities where people have either been training way longer have more acc accolades than you are gonna go and try to give you advice it's it's very easy to just be like ha bro you're fucking full of shit like I'm I'm stuck in my ways right like I don't need to do that and, and I've done it before, everyone's done it before, so being able to put your ego aside, which is hard to do in a very ego central sport, it's, it, it's super tough, especially when it's subjective. You could win one show, bring that same match to another show, and you don't even place top three, so it's something, it's something to consider. Alright, so here's one of, one of my boys, this is Chase, he went pro this year. So this video is basically how to become an IP pro. So the other work I've been giving tips from, you gotta sacrifice, you gotta have amount of toughness, all this. So, yeah, yeah. what's the advice you give to someone? Like, what does it take to be an IP pro? Uh, I think ultimately, man, you gotta realize what you're committing to, and you gotta know that you can't allow circumstances to prevent you from coming in this damn gym on Sundays, on Mondays, on a week where your kids out of school, whatever you got going on, you gotta make that sacrifice because if you don't. The guy you're going to stand next to on stage is, and he's going to bust your ass up there at the end of the day. Exactly. What, uh, what was one thing I said? You know, there's a ton of sacrifice that comes with it, and not even they're not even health sacrifices. It's not going to be convenient all the time, but you still got to make that shit fucking happen. We are at Wild Fork, and this is where I get my protein from. I'm just going to show you guys. I'm going to tell you what I get and how long it lasts me for, and I'm going to show you guys that the shit's really expensive. Like, yes, you could go a cheaper route, but I'm very big on what you put in your body. There's direct correlation to how you look, and you want to put the best quality food that you can. So we may get some extra stuff there, a little extra, but we're going to see. Should really go, like, ground sirloin. See, like, this right here would be something that's, like, extra as fuck. He's getting the elk medallions, and that's, like... For that right there, that's realistically one meal, and that's twenty-five dollars. But this is really why I want to get into hunting is because like venison, they charge eleven dollars, twelve dollars for it. Ground elk, twelve dollars. Just go get it yourself. Even wild boar is expensive. The bison's not bad. The bison steaks aren't bad. The sirloin. I'll try one of these fuckers out. So when it comes to beef, if it's 93, I eat seven ounces in like one sitting. And if I have that for multiple meals a day, I'm supposed to eat six times a day. It does not go very far. One of these packs, like a one pound pack, realistically cooks down to about 11, 11 to 12 ounces. So I lose four ounces off rip. So it's really three, two packs is three meals. So two packs last me, that's say that's one day of food. And then we still have three other meals. Maybe I have breakfast that's eggs and stuff. That's realistically, if I'm on point eating everything from here, that's three days worth of protein for $50. So then you know, another three days, another $50. Obviously we got the steak, but I like to throw steak in there. Fattier cut of meat, so like, it gets, it adds up. And like, we haven't really pushed food super hard. Like, it's only gonna go up from here. So you gotta, you gotta be prepared to, to spend a little bit of bread. The problem, oh yeah, you'll plug it back. Yeah, I'll plug it. Are you a YouTuber? Do you yeah, I do, I do social media. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey what's your YouTube? Hey, hey, it's it's J Lane. What? It's J Lane. Just J A Y space L A N E. Hey, let me hear the one. Hey, I just. <laughs> 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 
Yeah. <laughs> now we gotta fucking get on it for all these kids. And not kill ourselves. Yeah, not the burrito. Stuff like that makes it, like, I I've considered getting rid of this. Uh, I don't know if I've talked about that on here, but like, maybe I should have delayed this. Not saying that I can't afford it, but like I should have delayed it to where I could have just bought it like all cash or or, or or whatever, instead of just doing it based on like cash flow. But stuff like that makes it like, it's like hard to like not smile. Like bro, they literally all came out to fucking look at my car and they wanted me to rev it and shit. And it's like, I don't know, it's crazy. Cause I also remember being like young and like seeing people with crazy cars, like damn bro, I hope one day that like I could have some badass car like that. So I don't know, this shit's, this shit's wild. Uh, also, these tires do not hook for shit. Like I almost just killed us. Like this thing breaks the tires really, really easily. I used to have the Mickeys on here and realistically I need to just go back cause these Nittos do not fucking hook at all. Like, I literally just gave it a little bit of gas, and we just fucking fishtailed, and I went to go get it on it again, passing a car, and fucking swung out again. Hopefully, you guys learned something uh, for anyone out there who has aspirations to be a pro. And there's probably things that I left out, and obviously, it's my opinion. I'm just someone that fucking went pro. Like, who am I? But I do think that anyone that is a pro would agree with everything that I said. I don't think I said anything. Ah controversial the last thing that i'm gonna give you guys is get a fucking support system having a support system will be huge friends that you can lean on when your mind's playing games and, and your mental health is, isn't great and you know especially people that understand the sport right it's tough to to lean on someone that has no idea what why they're like why are you even dieting like why are you choosing to do this so support system will be huge so it's like you guys in a sense are, are my support system i can come on here and tell you guys how it really is and you know i get i get a whole lot of love back but i appreciate you guys as always it's been real it's been true it's young duke and boy jay lane and go chase your motherfucking dreams can you sign him out again duke my face nice duke